giving in to our temptations leads us to the opposite of happiness. Now, James has been talking about trials and struggles, and he comes back to it here in verse 12. Remember, towards the beginning, he told us, count it all joy whenever you encounter trials of various kinds. Why? Because it produces steadfastness in you. And we're going to see that word again here. In verse 12, it says, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. So these ideas of trial and steadfastness, that's not new here. He introduces this idea of being blessed, that that this connects back to what he's talking about with joy, that blessing is this happiness or this blessedness that happens for people who remain steadfast in the midst of trial. Why are are they blessed? What sort of blessing is, is put on them? Well, for, this gives us a reason for what has been said before, for when he has stood the test, this is like trial up here, he will receive the crown of life. So the crown of life here, this is the blessing that we're talking about. The, the person who is steadfast through trial, the person who remains rooted in Christ through all of the challenges that are going on in life, they are blessed, they can hope in the rewards of the kingdom of God. So it, 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 says, it has this idea of the crown of life. It's just talking about eternal life with him, that we actually can look forward to the blessing of eternal life with God. So we who love him, it, it says specifically, God has promised to those who love him. Specifically, it's those who love him. Not just anyone can can endure trials and look forward to this, but it's the people who love God that can look forward to the blessing of eternal life. And, And that will result from the fact that we persevered through all of these trials that come in life. Uh, well, then we are introduced to a very particular sort of trial that is talked about in the next few verses, and that's temptation. And he starts in an interesting way. He says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. So, This is a little interesting because I don't know many of us who would say, oh, God tempted me in a certain way. But James clearly anticipates that someone's going to have this idea that we're going through trials in life and it's producing steadfastness in in us. He thinks someone's going to think that God is actually tempting people and tempting people to sin. He says, no, that's that's not what happens. But then what he does is he actually, he, he, contrasts the character of God with the character of fallen human people like you and me. Uh, God, God isn't tempted, nor does he tempt man, on the other hand. If we go to verse 14, each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. So man, on the other hand, is lured and enticed by desire. We need to beware the desires that, that lure us and that entice us. There are so many things in this world that are attempting to entice us. There are so many things that are saying, hey, you can find joy here. If you watch commercials on TV, it's all about how you can find joy and hope and satisfaction and, and, and love and everything in this world. If you just buy this product, if you just act this particular way. You can have all of it. And it's enticing us. And it's, it, it, it is trying to play on our desires to pull us in. We need to beware of these things. Why? Because true joy and true happiness comes when we stand fast in Christ, when we are steadfast in the midst of trial. See, we are blessed if we remain steadfast under trial. We are not blessed when we're lured and enticed by our own desire. Because what happens with that? What's the result when we are lured and enticed? Desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin when it is fully grown, brings forth death. What a contrast between the one who stands fast in Christ and the one who gives in to their desire. It's either you can be a whole Christian that experiences the joy of God, or you can be led to sin and death. I want to challenge each of you to choose eternal life and eternal joy over the temporary thrills of this life that ultimately lead us to death.